Welcome guys to our latest tutorial and today it's going to be a little different. It's going to be more about 3D and for that I have one of the specialist Arc9ers, Lucas Milner, the main man, the fashizzle shizzle of 3D here at Arc9. Of course, with all the other team you see behind as well. And basically today we're going to show you how to make an amazing material out of one texture and how you can vary this and make it awesome. So now I'm going to introduce uh, Mr. Lucas uh, to tell us a little bit about his experience, how he got here and kind of, uh, yeah, rock and roll, dude. Uh, so, yeah. So, well, uh, I've been with Arkin 9 for almost three years now. Um, I'm loving it. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's been great. It's been really, really good, good experience. And yeah, I've, uh, I've started doing 3D when I was about 13 years old, something like that, as a, as a game modding at first. Mm. Um, and yeah, and then, then I kind of moved on to art because it was always yeah. interesting to me. It was a couple of people doing it around. I was like, yeah, it's, it's You're very really much cool. into games. So, yeah. so your background isn't specifically architecture related. Yeah, You've yeah, been yeah. into games. You've been all these, well, really interested in all these things. So again, it shows everyone, it doesn't really matter your background as long as the love is there. Yeah, exactly. And you know, what we do here is, is also more of an artistic approach, which well, games are for more hard, so yeah. you know it's it sort of correlates to each other. So yeah, it's really awesome, good. awesome. All right, so let's get onto this tutorial and let's let let's share the magic you have and what you know how to do and uh, tell everyone uh, your little bits and secrets that you can. All right, so uh, as we mentioned, what we have here is a couple of materials we're gonna be discussing today, uh, and as you can see, there's our main texture right here. And uh, as a matter of fact, uh, it's a just a simple concrete texture, a bit a bit on the dirty side when it comes to concrete, but it yeah looks looks really good, and it can be used in many many different ways to to help you achieve different things, not only concrete, and that's what we're gonna focus on today. So uh, as you can see uh, on our screen, usually when I do materials, I try to make a very simple setups with two lights, couple different primitives just to give me an idea how the material will, will look, how it reacts to light uh, and how it reacts when it's on a flat surface, when it's uh, on a curved surface, just to get a better understanding um, how the material will, will in the end look on different type of objects. And this is like one, I, I see you do this all the time. Yeah, I, every single material. It's much easier than just basically going into your big scene and doing it, right? Yeah, exactly. If you, if you would have to test it each time on your big scene, it would just take forever to, mm -hmm. to get it right. And with this, you can just use interactive. It's very quick, very simple, and gives you a really good idea of what you're going to make. Fantastic. So also what is really important is the interactive. We're using Corona. And that's how uh, our first example material looks like in, the, in this setup. So as you can see, we also have a bit of a light mix going on here, which this is not important for now. What's really important is our sky. Um, which we really put it low. We just want to see a bit of highlight. Uh, it depends obviously on the material. If your scene is going to be more of a daylight exterior shot, then you would want to uh, use this type of lighting. So it, it's, it really depends. What we do in this scene is a really sort of dark, uh, very moody interior, which um, you're gonna, you, you saw previously on the screen. Um, and that's why we're using this type of lighting to sort of replicate the mood that we're going for. Okay, Lucas, so now that we've got our basic scene, we've set all this up and we've basically applied, I think you applied a very, very simple material to this. How do we make this uh, how do we go from that one texture to create this metal, this concrete, and all these different elements? Yes. So we will go through uh, the process of creating this material first, then we'll move on to the other ones, because uh, they're all similar, they are different variations, slightly different options, giving you uh, really, really different, uh, different results in the end. So what we, do, what we really want is our basic Corona material, want to apply it to our objects in the scene. Now I started like, I remember doing this a bit old school because of the guys, they, they, they've always used Slate Editor, which is basically this, what you're seeing at the moment. But I used to use the old one. Yeah, and, I, and I remember actually in the <laughs> office, I was always telling you. <laughs> and this is so much easier than using uh, the old one, Slate Editor, you can see everything. And I guess I know a lot of the old school guys who, who were using that a lot. And then once you convert, you can't go back. 
anyway, go for yeah, it. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, so um, first what we want to do is take our basic Corona material and make as close to what we want to achieve as possible just using that. So what I would do is just bump diffuse to zero as we are making a metal material. So we don't really have diffuse, we really just use reflection. That just goes to black automatically. Yes. Uh, you, you can alternatively just set color to black. I just do level to, to zero, but it doesn't really doesn't mm -hmm. really matter to change anything. <clears throat> uh, the next thing I said is we put level or reflection level to one and we try to set our color to be more or less what we want. We will change it later. It, doesn't yeah. matter that much. Once you mix the light mixes as well, or you change them, they'll also have a different... Yeah, exactly. Yeah. We, For us, setting a color exactly to, to as it's supposed to be is, is not as important as we always can change mm. in post. So, yeah, our glossiness, 0.8, is, is the one, the value that you usually use for start, we want to see, and uh, for a very reflective gold metal, um, I would put IOR, say 17 for starters, see how it looks. And at this point, it looks good. It looks really, really nice. And that's a very good base to, to what we want to do. We might bump it up a little bit more, let's say 25. You could use, go to, um, to find online a proper IOR for certain type of metals. Uh, but the thing is, we prefer to to do it by eye because then we can achieve what we really want to achieve what we have in mind uh, and i think it gives mm. us a bit, bit more artistic touch to to our work a lot of what we do and again this is part of the whole mentality of what we do yes you can go scientific on it but we always look at how things look we look at photographs we look at um and we look at reality and we look at from various angles we look at where we are in the world the humidity levels all these types exactly. of things i mean you even wrote this down when we we're talking about yeah it. exactly <clears throat> it's um it's also uh, good to know that physically based materials are great and they're very useful uh but always you can change it you, you can even take these materials make them a little bit better fit your scene your lighting a bit a little bit more uh, even though as a base they're, they're good, they're really nice, but you can make them amazing once you put uh, your own personal touch to them. Mm -hmm. So uh, here, as I said, I'm satisfied with this as it looks now. And now we're going to use our texture. I'm just going to copy it around here. And now what we're going to do is we're going to use color correction as the first thing. I'm going to connect this here. Um, we're going to use output. right here and we're gonna put it into our reflec reflection gloss in it and now yeah it doesn't look great doesn't look nowhere so, near we were mm. so go for it and tell us why have you used uh, the color correction and the output? yes so um color correction is a matter of convenience honestly i, mm. I prefer it it, it kind of gives me the ease of mind but it's not really necessary for reflection glossiness because it's calculated uh, just in in black and white it doesn't mm -hmm. take color into account uh, but it's, it's just for myself to bump the saturation down and kind of see here mm -hmm. the proper um, glossiness map. Because yeah. otherwise we would see a bit of color here and mm -hmm. there and it just uh, fools you as long, mm -hmm. you know. I remember when you showed me this, it was the output. How? Yes, yes. So, yeah. so now the output, it's very important because what we're going to do with this map is we're going to turn it into sort of a dirt map by putting our RGB offset to minus one, and then we'll just bump it up. We have to see, it, it depends from texture to texture. Mm. On some textures, the value four is okay. Sometimes you have to go up mm. to 15. It really depends. It's basically contrasting it yes. and getting those levels, what we do in Photoshop to contrast the map. We don't need to go to Photoshop and we can just basically plug this. So. Exactly, and that gives us a really good, creates a, a sort of a dirt map they will just add a bit more. Right now, it doesn't look too appealing, but we'll up it a little bit more to see a little bit of that of that pure reflection in between there. So I'm really happy with that. So what we're gonna do now is go to our Maps tab and put the mount to about 10, let's say. And what we have now is, as you can see, is a bit of dirt going on around and that's what makes materials really realistic is 
is the little imperfections in it. It's it's not about big picture. It's about little detail that makes it like really, really. Well, yeah. You, yeah. you know. Well, in the, we're yeah. always preaching about how it's not so much about the detail. It's like the big yes. picture. But when you work at this level and you're, which we're, we're kind of talking about is a professional level and really kind of bringing up that 3D, these little things make a big yes. difference. Yes, yeah, yes, exactly. In, in the aspect of 3D and, and rendering and, and, you know, getting that detail in there straight, straight from render, yes. For and a final delivery, yeah. for instance, exactly. where you need to have that detail and everything looking amazing. Yeah, so, you know, it's still looking at the picture is, is is as important, but this looking at the small details is what really makes it, uh, gives the richness to it. Mm. You no, know, we, we always, even if we do it in post, we always look at the really small, you know, detail mm. highlight just to make it, and that's what makes images amazing. Yeah, and this obviously. is this is basically the same thing, <clears throat> just done in 3D. Okay, now, Lucas, on to the next bit. We've talked about a little bit about the, the reflection, glossiness, getting the uh, getting basic, the basic reflection set up. So the next bit, tell us what's up. Yeah, so uh, for me, the next bit is going to be bump. It's, uh, I find it being really, really important because it just gives you these little dot highlights around your material. So all, all you need to do is grab your texture and just input it into bump and on majority of them it will work it will just be enough you don't have to really change anything in there you can lower it you can put to 0 0.5 0 0.1 it depends how close and what you're trying to achieve it's a matter of experimenting with it um, and then another thing is reflection color reflection color also can be used just to give it even more detail on top of your reflection glossiness so what would you get from adding the reflection color so what would you get? It, it's as I say, it's just all about extra, uh, extra detail, just making it you know a bit more, more interesting. Yes, in some cases, which we'll move on later, uh, we're gonna utilize it to sort of bring out the um, the detail that we need. Uh, but that's gonna be in the ne next example. Okay. All right, Lucas. So the next thing we want to talk about is how we can use this map and create these variations that just keep, can keep going on and on really for the various materials, right? Yeah, so uh, the first one we're going to be looking at is uh, simple tiles uh, that you already can see on the screen here. So that's our result and uh, we, we were just going through the material, how it looks uh, rather than um, creating it from scratch. So in this case, we actually use tiles on top of what we talked about previously. It's, it's a very simple principle. Uh, tiles, just as as name suggests, uh, lets us create tiles. Only thing we did is we made it uh, white and black. So the ground is black, the tiles is white. Uh, we input it into diffuse color and reflection color, just so we can see that edge that you also can see uh, on the screen, just to have that separation. Uh, we've set our diffuse to 0.3 and diffuse to 50, so we blended 50% of the tiles map and we put it to 100 on reflection because we don't really grow up to be reflecting, it's, it's not necessary and it extracts that detail even at, at lower angles, as you can see further down, uh, you still can see where the grout is. Uh, then we just uh, put our texture through output to two tiles, we dropped it uh, into tiles as well. The grout is black because we again we don't we want to be this as diffused as possible. We inputted that into reflection glossiness, uh, and as previously we used our texture into bump. Uh, we've set it to 0.1, and the result is pretty much uh, on the screen. Uh, our reflection glossiness is just as previously our texture going through output. Uh, we inputted it into also into tiles um, to have that grout also not being uh, not getting any reflection, um, and we've blended it to 25 with 0.9 glossiness uh, in our main setting. Uh, then, as also as previously, we just took our texture, input it into bump, set it to 0.1. Uh, and yeah, that's our material. That's what that's what we have on the awesome. screen. And that's again all for one material. Do you want to show any other examples? Yeah. So we have another one here, which is just a bit of a rustic type of material. We can apply to our sphere in a scene, and it's just a little bit more sort of diffused, 
material, not as reflective. It's like a bit older, sort of. Um, you, you could even use it anywhere. You could use it on, on a wall, for example. Mm. It's, it, you know, it's, it's imagination. It's like it's a really brass, dynamic. almost. Like a yeah, yeah. You could, you could say. Not too reflective brass. Yeah, so uh, what we did here, actually, is we used Diffuse. Uh, we took our map to color correction. We darkened a little bit. I always used advanced, never use standard. Standard does a very weird crunch to textures. It just doesn't look good. So uh, we always sw switch to advanced. And what you really want to focus is these two, two values. It's this value and then this value, all the other ones you don't really have to worry about. <laughs> <laughs> we won't go into it too much, yeah. but basically to simplify it, yeah, very yeah, much exactly. so. Yeah, it's, exactly. It's, it's, never, it's never been cool. uh, very useful. So yeah, and that's also very simple. Same thing as before, output, bump, same as the previous materials. Uh, here we just adjust a bit of glossiness to our likings and a bit of blending as well. So it's, it's all about experimenting and seeing what works, what, what doesn't. It's, it's really about getting these values and trying, oh, will 10 work, will 15 mm. work, will mm. 70 work? You just mm. have to sort of uh, see what you have in your head and then try to replicate that, and it just, for trial and error, you can and get And it will vary, of course, with the lighting, it will vary with the situation yeah. you want to replicate. But this, again, with the post-production side, is really about, you know, bringing together the part that is all about the technicality with the artistry, and that's where the real magic happens when you bring these two together. Yeah. And that's why, like, artists such as Lucas, um, such as uh, many others here at Arc United, uh, really complement the whole system of what we create with the post-production. It's a very like um, it's a very integrated system. Yeah, uh, especially that we really look at it artistically. Yeah. All right. So we've come pretty much to the end of our tutorial. As you guys can see, uh, the scene that it's up on screen at the moment has been created using this methodology and basically from very simple materials. It was created by one of our artists, uh, Mr. Danny Boy over there. Danny, say big hello. Hello, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> but basically, um, yeah, so this scene has been put together just using this very simple method of one texture and that's it. And that's basically what created. Yeah, and it's pretty much exactly the same materials we run through uh, mm -hmm. today. It's, it's exactly these materials that's been used here. So, cool. and you can see it looks it looks it looks amazing. So that about does it for today. I hope you guys have enjoyed this tutorial. I know it's been a bit more technical, but more than usual. But honestly, uh, when Lucas told me this, um, he showed me this output uh, node and how it worked. It really changed things and I started using that and I saw how easy it is instead of mixing all these various textures to create something very basic with a lot of um, information and again you know it's it's a simple tutorial so it's the textures are repetitive there are things we could create but for the majority of our public who are out there this will be really helpful for you guys to really just add that little extra bit of depth into your textures I'd like to thank Lucas for standing in today he's done an amazing job I know. Yeah. It's a thank you. I mean, it's um, <laughs> as I said, it's uh, we've been really waiting on for this. So yeah, yeah, we finally we've, did it. We've wanted to do this for a long time, and he's created some amazing stuff, and we'll probably show it up on screen as we go along. And to you all uh, uh, at home watching us, a big thank you, and uh, don't forget the big thing, which is do, do it in post. post.